Hi, in this video we are going to see how to transform a DJI RS2 and a Blackmagic Pocket 4K into a fully controllable PTZ head and safe position presets using the APCR. Uh, of course you can use another camera and another DJI gimbal but for the purpose of this video we will take this combo because we have the highest level of control this way. Um, so here I have a DJI RS2 on the Tilta power supply base here and a Pocket 4K. Note that in order to use the APCR, you will also need the DJI Focus Wheel, uh, which features the four pin connection port we will need to connect to. Okay, so first let's turn on our Pocket 4K camera and the DJI RS2 here. So I've already balanced the setup beforehand. Um, there we go, so it's turned on. Then we will take the included gimbal cable and connect it to the DJI focus wheel of the RS2. We strongly recommend screwing the focus wheel on the right side of the gimbal so that uh, the connection port is facing downwards uh, so that the cable doesn't obstruct the rotation of the gimbal. So um, connect the gimbal cable uh, with the red wire towards the rounded part of the focus wheel like so. You can use the included stickers on the focus wheel to remember um, the connection direction to use. I'll put two different stickers here just in case one goes off. Once the cable is connected, set the little switch on the focus wheel to canvas. The canvas protocol allows you to control the DJI focus motor as well as record position presets. However, if you are using an older Ronin S, Ronin SC or a Ronin 2, you will have to set it to SBUS because these gimbals don't support the new canvas protocol. Uh, once you're done, connect the other side of the APCR gimbal cable to the SBUS or canvas port of the APCR depending on the setting you chose on the gimbal. Uh, since here we have a DJI RS2, we will connect it to the canvas port here. Um, please note that each time you change the switch position, it is best to restart the DJI gimbal, uh, otherwise the APCR might not respond properly. As soon as it's connected to the gimbal, the APCR will power up and the LED will light yellow. So you do not need to provide further power to the APCR. Um, if you are not using a gimbal and you only want a wireless camera control, you can provide power using the micro USB port only. Now that the APCR communicates with the gimbal, let's connect it to the camera. Um, there are two ways to do that. The first one is to use the integrated Bluetooth function of the APCR that can talk to the camera directly and control the camera settings this way. Um, the second one is to use the HDMI control protocol that is implemented in the Blackmagic Atom Mini series or the Blackmagic B-directional converter. Um, you can choose whichever you like because uh, the APCR sends the camera control information both using direct Bluetooth to the camera and um, HDMI through the Atom, uh, Ethernet, etc. The upsides of Bluetooth uh, over HDMI is that you have a few additional controls, faster response time, and you can use the APCR as a wireless Wi-Fi to Bluetooth repeater this way. Um, the advantages of HDMI uh, control through the Atom is that you will have Tolly information shown on the camera screen. For now, we'll focus on how you can connect your APCR to your camera using Bluetooth. So for the purpose of this demonstration, we're using another camera. Uh, it's not the camera that's on the gimbal. It's the same process on both cameras. In order to pair uh, the camera to the APCR using Bluetooth, so you download and install the Middle Setup iOS app. Next, activate the Bluetooth both on the Blackmagic camera in the Setup menu and on your phone. Then you open the middle setup app and click on your APCR. You can start pairing your camera by uh, selecting your camera and then you'll get a prompt for a pin in the setup page of your Blackmagic camera. So uh, you type in the pin that is shown on the Bluetooth page of the camera and it will finish the pairing process. So now the LED of the APCR will turn from yellow to blue and your camera is connected to the APCR. Uh, you can set your camera number uh, in the iOS app too. 
If you have an ATEM, this number is also called the ATEM camera ID. Next, connect both your laptop and your APCR to the same router uh, using Ethernet. If you are using an ATEM, make sure the ATEM is also connected to the same network. Uh, this way, all your devices should have an IP address that has the same subnet. Um, this is very important, and if it's not the case, the APCR won't work. Once you have all your devices on the same network, download and install the Metal Control app on your laptop, and now you should see your APCR pop up in the status page of the app. Here you will see all your APCR units on this page. Um, you can see that this uh, APCR there is connected to the camera, it's connected to the gimbal using CAN bus as well, etc. So if you click on one unit, you will have access to detailed information about the device, um, and you can change the ATEM camera ID from here uh, too. Now let's move to the fun part, joystick control. So first make sure the CAN bus and Bluetooth icons are turned on in the status page. Next, uh, we're gonna go in the gimbal tab here, select the camera ID we want to control, and then we'll click on the pan tilt arrows. So you should start to see your gimbal move like this. If I long press, it's gonna move continuously. And I can adjust the pan tilt speed there so that um, if, I, if I press again here, it's gonna move very slowly if the pan tilt speed is um, at the minimum value here. And uh, now in the camera tab, you can also try to adjust the, the iris, um, the focus, the ISO, and uh, you can check whether everything is working. You can connect one or more external joystick controllers uh, for which you can assign any gimbal and camera action to any button or axis. So for instance, let's say I want to map the pan axis of the gimbal to the pan axis of the joystick. Well, I just go to the gimbal section here. I will press edit mappings. Then I press one of the pan arrows since I want to map the pan axis of the joystick. And then I just move the pan axis of the joystick and there, here we go, it's mapped. Uh, and you will see the name of the axis right next to it. So same for um, the other axis, I can do the autofocus too if I go back to the camera page. Um, I can map uh, all the settings this way. We can also map uh, buttons, for instance, if we want, uh, I have this button here that can go uh, up and down and it's just a switch, so I can map it, for instance, to the ISO. So if I click on edit mapping and then I select the um, ISO uh, minus button to decrease and then I move the button here, uh, same for the plus button, so I click the plus, I move here. And then when I save the mapping, as you can see, when I move this down, I have the ISO going down and move this up to the, to the right, sorry. Uh, the ISO is going to move up. So left down and then right up. Now, um, let's talk about working with multiple gimbals at the same time. So here we have three gimbals. We have a Ronin S here, a Ronin S2, and a Ronin 2 at the back there. Uh, each gimbal and camera is connected to an APC. And here we have camera ID number one, this is camera ID number two, and the broadcast is camera ID number three. We wanted to make switching from one gimbal to another extremely easy. So let's say you're controlling like this gimbal and then let's say, oh, uh, you want to control this one and then this one and then back to this one. Well, to do that easily, you can map camera ID selectors one to eight to any of the joystick buttons. So for instance, here I've put stickers uh, on the three buttons here. So here you can see the, the three different camera numbers, one, two, three, camera one, there we go, camera two, and camera three, here. Okay, and then let's go back to camera one. There we go. Finally, there are a few camera settings that you can map, which can contribute to enhancing your workflow. With Blackmagic cameras, for instance, you can trigger color bells, uh, you can show the false colors on one or more screens, or even display the status information on a camera that isn't on air, uh, just to check whether the frame rate uh, is okay or whether you're actually recording. So on this joystick system here, so I mapped uh, the, the focus here on this slider there. Um, on, on this lever here. Um, I also mapped uh, the iris here, as you can see. 
I have mapped the speed of the pan tilt on this slider. So if I put it at the maximum value, it's gonna move very, very fast like this. And if I put it back to the minimum here, you can see that it's gonna be very, very smooth. And even, th even if I zoom like at the maximum value, Having the pan tilt speed at the minimum value is uh, very practical for long focal length. Um, here I'm at 100 millimeters and you can see that um, when I move, the movement is highly smooth. So I can move the joystick here at um, extreme values and it, the movement will stay very, very, very slow. Okay, so I can do the same things with the, the zoom here. So uh, the zoom is currently very, very fast. And if I change the Oliver level, so if I bring this level down, when I zoom out here, I'm gonna have a very, very small, very, very small movement here. And of course, if I move the zoom um, speed to the maximum here, I'm gonna find this again, this very high speed again, okay? Now I can map plenty of other settings, but uh, you get the general idea. If you want to control the zoom remotely on your lens and it does not have a motorized zoom inside, you just attach uh, the DJI focus motor to the gimbal, you tighten the ring on the zoom of the lens and you connect the focus motor to the middle USB-C port of the RS2 using the DJI USB-C cable. Uh, now, you need to calibrate the zoom by going into the corresponding menu on the RS2 LCD screen and you just press calibrate and it will run an auto calibration during which the motor will find the endpoints of, of the lens. In some cases, we recommend you hold the lens and you press it towards uh, the motor throughout the calibration process um, to prevent the DJI focus motor from slipping over the gear. Uh, we also recommend to use a 3D printed uh, infinite zoom ring, which you can buy, for instance, from followfocusgears.com, I think. And uh, it makes things much easier than having to tighten the custom rings each time. If you also have an ATEM connected to your network router, we recommend connecting metal control to the ATEM so that you can fully benefit from the camera presets feature. Also, connecting metal control to the ATEM will allow you to use ATEM software control with the Blackmagic camera and all of that wirelessly since the APCR has a built-in Wi-Fi antenna. To connect middle control to your ATEM, uh, you just need to go to uh, the switcher tab here. You set your ATEM IP address and you press connect and your ATEM will show up. I can proceed to the next part of the tutorial, which is position presets. So, Position presets are very practical if you want to save a predefined state of the camera and the gimbal and we call it later with a press of a button. For each preset, the APCR will save the corresponding pan, tilt, roll, and zoom motor value of the gimbal. Moreover, if you use Blackmagic cameras with an ATEM, you can also store the current uh, white balance, ISO, and iris value into each preset in addition to the gimbal motor information. Finally, if you use a Blackmagic camera that has an MFT lens mount, you can also save the current focus value of uh, the lens. In order to recall the preset, uh, we'll first go to the preset tab of middle control here. Uh, then we're going to select the camera ID we want to control. Here it's camera three. You can see that now we have 12 presets for this camera. So 3.1, 3.3, all the way up to 3.12. We'll start with the first preset of camera three. So um, in order to save gimbal and camera settings into that preset, we're going to go into edit preset mode here. And then we're going to select our present number 3.1. So it's the first preset of camera three. And then here we are going uh, to uh, tick all the boxes here so that it saves the zoom, the focus, the iris, the ISO, the white balance. Um, if you cannot tick some of the boxes, it means that you're not connected uh, to the ATEM. So you have to be connected to an ATEM to have all the boxes uh, showing up. So um, now once we've ticked all of these, so we're going to make a first position here. Um, for instance, like this, this one, we have the whole controller there. I'm gonna set the focus like so. 
Okay, so we're going to save this position here and uh, to save it, we're going to press erase and save current state here. So there we go, we have preset one. Now we are going to do the second preset. So we're going to go back into edit preset mode, select 3.2 and then we're going to make another position. Um, let's say, yeah, we can do like something like on the, on the yoke here. So I'm going to zoom in here and do something with just the yoke. So there we go, I'm gonna adjust the focus. And once I'm okay with that, um, I'm gonna save um, erase and save current state there. So we have um, data saved into the second preset. So I'll go back into edit preset mode, select 3.3. And this time we're going to go into an area which is much darker. So for instance, I don't know, I'm gonna go here. You have a Mac here. Um, we're gonna try and make a preset over there. So it's very dark, so I'll uh, move the ISO here. We can, we'll make it much, much, much brighter there. Okay, maybe a little bit less. Okay, um, and we're gonna change the white balance a little. Okay, here we go. So now we erase and save the current state so that it's saved into preset three. So now that we've recorded the different presets, we can just go back into uh, the preset tab and we can just recall them one by one. So here, if I go back to preset 3.2, you'll get this one. If I go back to 3.1, uh, we'll get this one again here. Um, there we go. We got, I think it was the Mac here. So it will restore whatever uh, value was inside. So whichever um, white balance, ISO, IRS, focus uh, value that was recorded when you made the preset. And of course, this is very practical when you have like a conference and multiple people speaking and you just want to go jump to several uh, key speakers um, and they're just sitting on a chair so you can instantly go back to their position. It can also be very practical when you have an audience um, that like applause, etc., where you can just target someone in the audience and just like uh, have it very, have an applause shot very um, uh, ready to go. It's worth noting that the presets are saved into the APCR itself. So if you restart the APCR or middle control, uh, the presets uh, remain saved in its memory. So even if you restart the camera or even the atom, um, the preset should still be there. If you have issues recording presets, for instance, uh, it's not recording the proper white balance, it's not recording the proper focus ISO, uh, well, then you have to move the setting uh, physically into uh, middle control or the Atom software control um, before you actually record it. So, for instance, even if the value is saying 5600K for the white balance, uh, I recommend you just uh, move the setting up and back again uh, before you actually save it. This is true for uh, white balance, ISO, uh, iris, focus, and that's it. Talking about focus, um, we are facing a technical limitation at the moment, which is that you have to move the focus manually through uh, Atom software control or using uh, the middle control uh, mapping before recording the value. You can't just press autofocus and save the preset, unfortunately. So we know this is a bit annoying, and we are actively working on trying to make it better. Uh, the limitation comes from the fact that we are reading the value stored into the Atom and not the camera itself. Uh, this is also why an Atom is required for saving these settings. Uh, we are looking at how the APCR could read the value that is into the camera using Bluetooth. This way you will be able to save the focus value even after an autofocus action. In this section, we are now going to see how uh, you can control your Blackmagic camera and DJI gimbal wirelessly right from your control room and without any cable, so using Wi-Fi. Uh, this can be very practical when you have a camera operator who is moving around on stage without any cables and you want to control the camera settings such as the iris, shutter, white balance, ISO, color correction remotely, wirelessly in order to match it with the other uh, cameras. Uh, indeed, although you can send the video signal of the camera wirelessly to uh, the Atom switcher through a wireless video transmitter, you cannot send back the camera control information using the same video transmitter. Uh, this is where the APCR comes in handy. So it will basically act as a Wi-Fi to Bluetooth converter talking to the Atom 
through the network and passing camera control data to the camera using Bluetooth. You don't have to worry much about Bluetooth reliability issues since the idea is to bring the APCR as close as possible to the camera in order to maximize signal strength. Now start by connecting your APCR to middle control software using a micro USB cable. Um, once the APCR is connected, jump to the setup page of Middle Control, click on APCR setup and enter the Wi-Fi credential of your router. Uh, you can also change the camera ID from here if you like. And uh, there we go. Once you've entered the Wi-Fi credentials, you can then uh, save the settings. Uh, you can unplug the APCR since the USB connection is only required for setting it up. So uh, you can now power the APCR with a USB power bank or directly on the Pocket 4K uh, using the USB-C output of the Pocket 4K. So here, here I have an adapter which allows me to output um, 5 volts to the APCR using the micro USB port of the APCR. There we go. Now that the APCR has both the Wi-Fi login and password inside, uh, once it's powered up, you just have to wait for around 30 seconds and then uh, the unit will show up in the status page with a little Wi-Fi icon uh, in the middle control software. So uh, to finish, you set your ATEM IP address in the switcher tab, you press connect and your ATEM will show up. So now we need to pair the APCR to the Blackmagic camera using Bluetooth in order for these two uh, devices to communicate together. And you're pretty much ready to go. Now you can uh, select um, the APCR with the camera ID here. If we go to camera control, uh, it's camera ID number four. So um, we can now start adjusting. You see the, the gain here. So as we move the gain, it will wirelessly change its values here and uh, the white balance here. So I'm just changing gain, white balance. I can change the, the shutter as well um, here. Um, I can do all of these things and I can also do that using uh, the ATEM software control. So if you have connected uh, the ATEM here in the switcher tab, uh, you have connection with the ATEM, then you can use uh, ATEM software control here to uh, start adjusting. So it was camera four. So here, as you may see, um, I can just adjust the iris here. Um, I can like do some color grading, all of that wirelessly um, there. Uh, what can we do? We can do this on the, the black levels here. Um, so we can do more advanced uh, color, color correction here. Uh, we can switch uh, ND filters, etc. So it's worth noting that this advanced color correction tab here with contrast, saturation, luma, gain, etc. This will only work if your camera's recording codec um, is set to Blackmagic Pro. Um, if it's set to ProRes, this won't work. So um, make sure you're setting your codec to Blackmagic Pro, even if you're not recording anything. I have focused here on wireless camera control, but um, the APCR can also receive uh, gimbal data wirelessly as well. So you can send uh, gimbal and camera data uh, wirelessly through Wi-Fi. And if you have a powerful Wi-Fi router, then you're gonna get much more range. Oh, it's worth mentioning that the APCR will always prioritize the Ethernet connection. Uh, and as soon as the Ethernet cable is removed, it will jump to Wi-Fi within around 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, when you plug the Ethernet cable back in, uh, it will reconnect to the wired network within around 10 seconds. If you are using Companion with one or more stream decks, uh, we are currently working on a plugin. It's not quite ready yet, uh, but in the meantime, you can already trigger presets with a stream deck without waiting for the plugin. I've put a link in the description to an article that explains how you can proceed to connect a middle control to BitFocus Companion. If you want to update your APCR, uh, you'll want to install the latest version of Metal Control, uh, plug your APCR into your computer using USB, go to the setup page, and if an update is available, uh, you will be able to click update. 
In the APCR setup page, uh, you can also set your Wi-Fi credentials, uh, set your camera ID, change the name of your APCR and check its current IP address settings. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or issues setting up your APCR, please let us know in the comments of this video so that everyone else can see or just send us an email at hello at middlethings.co and we'll be happy to help. Stay safe and see you soon.